The Boeing 767 is one of the most essential twin-engined aircraft to be built. If you're interested in hearing the story of the 767, make sure to head back on the channel a couple of weeks and check out our previous coverage. The focus though now sits on a variant that never made it past development, and also the drawing board, a 767 variant dubbed the 767X. Over 70% of our viewers aren't subscribed on Globetrotting, so make sure to subscribe, that way you'll never miss an analysis video. In the 1980s, Boeing was exploring ways to develop further its 767 family, which at the time had already spent some time within the industry and enjoyed largely successes. By 1986 specifically, the company had announced plans for a variant dubbed the 767X. This was set to be a partial double-deck aircraft. It was a plane that at its very core would feature a hump, which would house additional seating and be located towards the back half of the fuselage. While a unique concept, aircraft manufacturers have actually revealed far weirder ones that we are excited to explore on the channel in the coming months. Ultimately though, the 767X came at a period when airlines were after additional capacity on twin-engined aircraft. Boeing explored the 767 therefore for this very reason, hoping to capture the market. However, it ultimately didn't have the desired market interest that maybe they intended. Eventually, the plane maker decided to shelve plans for such a radical design and move ahead with its 777, which we know as a resounding success and ultimately a decision largely be applauded and determined as the right one. The 777 offers customers more capacity and with that more possibilities, all on two engines. The case could also be made that the birth of the highly efficient 787 Dreamliner filled the market that the 767X would have intended to capture albeit a market that it did fail to capture with this concept plane. Boeing intended its 767X to seat over 300 passengers. It would ultimately therefore be quite heavier. Problems already therefore were present. With still two engines, as this would not be a trijet or quadjet, there were questions around the additional weight, which was concerning, as how would Boeing power such a plane? The great thing about concepts is they are of course unique, but in their own right, they stay as concept jets for a reason. The 767X in recent years actually came back to life. This is something we thought we wanted to mention, but it's not quite the same kind of aircraft we once knew it to be in the 1980s, but as a more efficient 767. In 2019, talk emerged regarding Boeing's plan to potentially re-engine its famous 767. They would have called it the 767X and move forward with a new middle of the market airliner that that would be relatively low cost to operate and likely not have that many crew related training issues. It would therefore benefit takers greatly. Boeing already had the groundwork completed thanks to its established 767 program, therefore development costs could be kept on the low. This avenue is something we've seen take place already with the 737NG to the 737 MAX. However, this incurred more difficulties than Boeing may be expected and is now used as a primary example of why the dated design may be in need of a refresh, and that Boeing has really executed everything it can from a very tired body and design. Flight Global were the ones that broke the story in 2019, indicating that a 767X was being examined for, yes, passenger roles, but also as a freighter. It would have entered service in the mid-2020s and would have been powered by GENX engines. This is one of the newer stories related to the 767X that had a little bit of weight behind it. Ultimately though, this didn't move ahead, and now the middle of the market sector remains an area of the industry for Boeing that they are not all that present in and one that Airbus can widely claim as their own. Last year we learned that Boeing would not move forward with a clean sheet new aeroplane until the 2030s, when they hope technology will have improved and give them a chance to truly offer a revolutionary design that will re-cement the company as the number one innovator in the sector, and also the number one manufacturer, a title it has lost in recent years thanks to a host of different reasons. These discussions for a re-engine 767X tie into calls for a 757X to be a thing as well. For now though, these aircraft are dreams rather than realities. So as you can see, the 767X has been brought up many times in recent decades for different purposes. 
Moving back though to the 1980 design, that would have seen a hump added, and the aircraft be labelled as an inverted 747 thanks to it being towards the back of the plane rather than the front. Well, it was a plane that just couldn't attract interest from customers, and the more Boeing studied it, the more it marketed it, the more realisation hit that it was also an aircraft that just wouldn't make sense on many levels. From the standpoint of getting it in the air, to powering the aircraft and much more, the 777 program is what Boeing eventually moved forward with, which at its very core does look similar to the 767 if you take away the length aspect. It's not all that different, say if you're comparing a 787 to a 767. It's interesting to us, at least, to see how failed concepts that may be labelled as weird, ugly, or even ludicrous can actually be the birthplace for genius ideas that lead to long and very successful programs in the aviation industry. This can most definitely be applied to the Boeing 777 that still flies today and is still being delivered, and has a long future ahead as a converted freighter, with even by the late 2020s, the introduction of multiple variants in its new form as the 777X. So, while the 767X never really went ahead as the double-decker that maybe Boeing had intended, it did allow for the Boeing 777 to be solidified as the option that they wanted to move forward with as an aircraft manufacturer. So, ultimately, you could make the case in point that it wasn't all negative, and while we'll look back on it as being a very weird concept, there are positives around it. Now though, it's over to you. What do you make of the 767X as a double-decker, or as a new middle-of-the-market option? Because as we know, the 767X was going to have multiple different uses depending on the time where it was discussed, whether that be the 1980s or in 2019. Look, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the concept down below in the comments, and as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, we would also love to cover more concept aircraft here on the channel, whether that be for Airbus and or Boeing. So, you can also use the comments as a place to put forward your requests for videos. If you have a look in the description, you'll also be able to find a Google form that directly allows you to suggest content that we will look to adapt into videos. Stay tuned though, there is much more analysis on the way as we move into February and we're very excited for you to see the content to come. Thank you so, so much for your continued support here on the channel. We know, of course, the videos haven't been performing as well of late, but we hope you're still enjoying the topics that are being covered, and we'll try our very best to continue to please you with the content that arrives on your screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.